Hey guys, this is Garb. Uh, welcome to my channel, Tech Fit. Today we have a new challenge. So the new challenge is about finance automation. Okay, I'm trying to automate my finances. Now, I'm a personal trainer and I do earn income from personal training. So with that income, I do have to do my expenses. I have to do maintain my books and do my taxes. Now it is like I have to do it once a year, but it is really like if you are doing it on a quarterly basis or yearly basis, you do have to do a lot of work to get your books ready and see what expenses you have to take off from that. Now, which makes it really hard for me to do it every year and year, which brings me to this challenge where I want to automate it all. Now, people who are out there also are or self-employed or who have their own business wants to automate their finances or even just somebody who's looking for a project to do in terms of using Python and different programming languages that are automated end-to-end -end. this would be a really good challenge for them as well because I'll be breaking it down from end-to-end -end how I get onto it in terms of exporting the data and how do I use it and what do I use which tools I'm looking at now the problem with this is that my I'm gonna make it really more complicated as well. Now, because I have multiple accounts, now I don't know why I do have multiple accounts, but if I have an account with Revolut and my bank, now I have multiple statements. But what I found was each of the banks are providing you with CSV format of your statement. So which gives me an idea that I can actually use all these statements, bring them all together and have a one view of the world for myself so I can see where I'm spending my money on or the money that's coming in, what's the expenses against that money and have it all in one app rather than me flicking around through different apps. So that's the overview of the challenge for this. I'll be using Python, I'll be using Rshiny to build the front end of the app and I'll be using Airflow to kind of like automate it all. So it's kind of like an ETL job like because I'm going to extract the data, transfer it and load back into my app and which will show me the final product of this. So without more talk, we'll actually start getting into building the wireframe for it so we can begin coding. So I'll see you on my desk. Perfect. So we're going to start doing the project now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put a, down a wireframe together. It's just maybe my personal preference that I do like to build a wireframe in the first place to see how the project will look like, what tools I'll be using and what part of the integration. You can actually use bullet points if you want, but I'm going to start putting down this diagram together. Perfect, so the wireframe is there. So what, what I'm trying to do now is so I'll be using my phone. I have Dropbox installed on my phone. So the idea is to export all the bank statements onto my Dropbox account from my phone. Once that's there, then I'll be using Python ETL Airflow and the Python code itself to actually automate the whole process of calculation of my tax and putting together all the expenses, income, and putting them into different categories. Now, once that's done, the, the idea after that is to use our Shiny to deploy the Rev front end, which will be for my app. And I'm, I want to use uh, Raspberry Pi to deploy my code into Raspberry Pi and to actually have a view of the dashboard in there to actually see, because I just don't want to restart my app again and again. I just want to leave it running on my Raspberry Pi. And no matter what I want to see my statement, I can just go in there. Now I do want this UTL frequency to be every half an hour. So the UTL on the Raspberry Pi will be running every half an hour. I just have to deploy my app on the phone. I'll use the export service of the CSV files from different bank statements, deploy them into the Dropbox, 
open the account on my Raspberry Pi and the app is already there and it's already refreshed because it's getting fresh every half an hour. So without wasting any more time, let's begin coding this. So first I'll, I'll start coding the, the initial phase one, which is the actual Python code to do all the data processing. And then we'll build the ETL bit, which is to automate the whole script to run every half hour. Half hour. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm building my second function now. So in this function, what I want to do is I want to actually build any transactions that have been done between accounts. I do not want to count them. So what I'm doing is I'm using numpy where condition where if the string contains a certain name or a certain value in the description or a category tab, I'm trying to basically exclude them from my analysis. So that's what I'm going to do in this function. Perfect, so now I have to calculate my tags. So I can use list comprehension or I can use lambda function. In this situation, I've entered a lambda function because it does the job where what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to apply different rates based on each value of the row. So that's why I have an if condition where the value is less than 2942. I need to kind of like split the, the income itself into two, uh, two different incomes where anything above 2942 should be having a rate of 40%. Anything below that should have a rate of 20%. And if the income is less than 2942 anyway, just apply a standard rate on it. So that's why I'm using lambda function on a row level to do it more quicker way for me.
Perfect. So I have my class finished. So I built a class called Finance Automation and I have multiple functions in that class. So what I'm trying to do is, so in the first function, I'm trying to do process uh, the transaction because again, all the files from different bank are completely in different formats. I'm trying to bring them into one singular format. And then in my second function, it, which is this uh, taxable, I'm trying to build a flag that basically shows which are the expenses that should be included while calculating tax or the expenses that should not be included and plus the income as well. Because uh, do, if you are transferring money from one uh, account to the other account, that would be a transfer rather than an income. So that's uh, what I do in that function. And then I have a next function, which is calculate tax, which is where I'm putting the logic to calculate the actual tax. And in the last function, which is to Dropbox, I'm putting these files, which is the, the last file for all the the calculations which are merged into one back into the Dropbox plus also another file which is where I have calculated the tax and I know exact income, the expenses and all of them are now deployed back into Dropbox which then I'll be using Airflow to actually automate this step in which I'll build the ETL to do it every half an hour so let's get on to that. Perfect, so if you haven't used Airflow before, so you have a couple of options the way you can run your Airflow. You have Python operators, you have Bash operators, and you have dummy operators. Now, I'll be leaving some sort of documentation on the description below, which will show you how to install the Airflow on your machine. Once you have installed your Airflow, you have to just run the web server of Airflow and the scheduler of Airflow. And once you do that, which I'll be demonstrating on this video on right now, once you have initiated your Airflow, uh, initially what you do is you have to put your DAG, which is in a Python format, onto the Airflow and YouTube Airflow in a DB, and that will deploy your Airflow uh, Python code onto the web server itself, which where it gives you a nice looking front GUI page where you can actually turn on or turn off your Airflow task. Now Airflow is really useful if you want to use it for Python operators, Bash operators or dummy operators. But in this example, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to build my script into a Bash operator and I'll be running those Bash operators through my Airflow DAG files. Now, as you can see, my web server has started on the local host and I have turned on my scheduler. I've also imported my DAG file that can actually be visible on the front end of the view page of Airflow. So we're going to have a look now. We're going to turn it on on the front end and we'll see once the, the script runs and we can check the files are updated also in the Dropbox account. That's perfect. So once I run the scripts, I can see the files are now dead in the Dropbox account. So everything is running perfectly. Now I'm going to move on to my phase three, which is building the front end of the app. And for that, I'm using Shiny Dashboard and R to actually see how the front end of my app will look like. And that's the app that I'll be looking at whenever I want to look at my finances. So for this, I'm going to go to my R studio and I'll be using Shiny Dashboard to build that front end.
Alright, so I've finished my face right now. So my face, as you can see, the app is pretty attractive and you can actually have it in the um, iPad format or a phone format and you can actually look at the accounts of the top and then you have your overall profile where I can see my course income tax, the net income, obviously about the tomato numbers, but you can see my expenses where I'm spending my money on one which categories and then expenses based on date, income based on date and then you have a table format on the bottom. So that's kind of like the, the um, front end that I want to view every time I open my app. So the next thing would be I'm going to actually put that all into a GitHub account and then I'm going to deploy that code back into my Raspberry Pi. So there's 23 phases to this app where the phase one where I did all my data processing, phase two where I did all my automation and then the phase three which is the front end app of this application. And I will also leave the code on the bottom of this video in the description box so you can actually copy the source code from the github account and i hope you find this code really useful and you can actually use it for your own purposes as well either for learning or actually for building the similar app for yourself and you can actually take this as a baseline you can obviously grow more and then obviously I, i'm just trying to show you as a one day build but if you spend uh, more time on this app, you can actually make it really suited to your needs and what you actually want to get out of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I was really happy with the output, like it, it looked like what exactly I wanted to achieve and I know it's in future. It will also help me to do all my finances automatically and if it does help you as well, you can actually use this and maybe grow more on this. And uh, if you do like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, it definitely helps me to grow the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.